And now I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, PowerPoint 2016, Tips and Tricks for Effective Presentations. I'm going to hand things over to our future presenter today. He is one of our very own New Horizons instructors, Mike Martin. Mike, you now have the floor. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you so much for the nice introduction and welcome everybody. As was just stated, my name is Mike and I will be the facilitator for this PowerPoint 2016 webinar. And here's what we have in store for us. First of all, I'd like to go around and explore the environment of PowerPoint. There are a lot of good things in PowerPoint that will help us be better presenters and also building better decks if we know exactly where everything is and how we can utilize them to the best possible situation. Then I'm going to talk about tailoring your presentation to the audience, right? The key is to make sure you pass on information to the audience and how to best do that. And one of the ways to do that is building better slides. So I have some guidelines as far as really building better slides when we're presenting. And then along the way, I will give you some delivery tips on how to use PowerPoint. But before I start, I would like to just introduce myself. As you know, my name is Mike. I am a training facilitator, all right? So I facilitate training. I'm also a certified Microsoft trainer, and I've earned a um, specialist in PowerPoint. So I got those two little badges up there. And I've been doing this for a really long time. So I've been doing this well over 20 years. Uh, my specialty is Microsoft products, but I also do some essential skills like customer service and presentation skills. I am currently in Roseville, Minnesota. I was born in St. Paul and I'm married with three daughters. Just a couple things to add on. Say, it is a power hour, right? We only have an hour. So I'm gonna ask that we keep our distractions down. And my job is to keep your engagement up. So we only have an hour and I'll kind of work through it uh, kind of a show and tell type style and you can take notes or make mental notes and just gain skills for PowerPoint. Also, as was mentioned, if you want to type in questions in the chat window, we'll go over them towards the end. I'll allow some time at the end for a Q&A and uh, that will be perfect. All right, so let's get at it. I'm going to go ahead and pull out of this PowerPoint and minimize it. And then I'm gonna use my Alt tab. So I hold the Alt key down with my thumb and I tab through all the other windows I have open. And then this is gonna be the PowerPoint that I'll use for our class. So it's just a, you know, play PowerPoints deck that I can use. Let's look at the environment of PowerPoint. Now I'm using 2016. And everything that I talk about will be applicable to any version that you have. Okay. So starting way up in the upper left hand corner, this tool right here is called the Quick Access Toolbar. Now, if you've never used it, you only have save, undo, and redo on it, right? But I've got other tools like Start Slideshow from the Beginning. It's a great place to start. Touchpad, so for my touch screen, so I can touch or use a mouse mode. And also this email right there is a huge time saver. So knowing these products really well will save us time, will save us effort, will be, make us more efficient. And when I click on a little down arrow, this is how I customize it. So I can put on automatic save or like I said, email, maybe you do a lot of printing. So you check mark the tools that you want to use and that's how you turn them on or off. And then when you become more comfortable with PowerPoint, you go to more commands. And there's literally all sorts of commands that you can add to your quick access toolbar. And I always add tools that a, I use all the time, like all the time. 
or B, tools I use periodically and are so important, but I can never find them. So you decide what to add. And all you gotta do is select one and add it right there in the middle. And then when you become a power user, oh my goodness, like all Microsoft products, there's ribbons that aren't even turned on. There's commands you don't even know about. So then you can go to all commands and there's hundreds of commands. And one of my favorite ones, they're alphabetical order, maybe just take a mental note, is called speak. See how I have it on mine over on the right? So you can select text, click on speak, and it reads it back to you. So now you can have, you can proof your own work. You don't have to have colleagues proof it for you. And speak is instrumental, at least for me, in Outlook and in Excel. Because one little zero in Excel can cause a lot of problems. But if I have speak on, I hear what I have. So you customize that quick access toolbar. All right. The next thing is the ribbon. And it starts off with the file tab. So the file tab, you can get to save and save as. You can also share your presentations with colleagues if you use an Office 365. And then you can also export your Power, PowerPoint presentation. You can export it to a PDF. Because people always say, Mike, can I have your deck? Uh, I'll give you my PDF. You can package for a CD, which is how you can uh, package it up so you can show your presentation on any computer, any platform, like a Mac, and even computers that don't have PowerPoint. Yeah, it packs up a little PowerPoint viewer so you can show your presentation on computers that don't even have PowerPoint. I'm gonna use my left arrow, go back to my ribbon. It is called a ribbon, so I'm using all the proper terms. And the ribbon is made up of three parts, your home tab, groups, so all your commands are organized in groups. And then some of the groups, so like my home tab, my font group, some of the groups have dialog box launchers that launch a dialog box for even more commands. One thing about the ribbon, it does take up a lot of real estate. So if you're presenting, like say I am today in GoToWebinar, I can double click on a tab and then it minimizes, it collapses the ribbon. And that way, my audience can see more of what I'm doing. And some people just prefer this. You can click on a tab, you got all your commands in groups, but when you click off, see it collapses. And to get it back, double click, you're right back. Over on the left is a pane, and it shows all the thumbnails of your slide. And this pane is adjustable. I'm, com I'm coming back to this pane though. It's much more important than just that. All right. Then as you know, you got your slide in the main window. And you can zoom in and out. So on the status bar, you got zoom tools. So the status bar is that gray bar way in the bottom. So Mike is all of a sudden jumping way to the lower right. Because you can zoom in and you can zoom out. But you know what? When I'm building a deck or when I'm presenting, I always have a mouse. Because using that trackpad on my laptop, that takes a lot of effort. So I do have a mouse. And in all Microsoft products, if you hold your control key down on your keyboard, and use the wheel of the mouse, that's how you zoom. But now everybody focus in here. This is really a great tool. See the gray area around the slide? It's called a palette, but think of it as a table. 
and you can store items on the table. So for example, my first slide, look at what I got stored on my table. Whoops, there we go. So we're meeting with General Mills and we're having a meeting with Sammy and Tom. So Sammy and Tom are gonna be um, our representative and then we're gonna meet with people from General Mills. So I've got a little logo, so I may wanna customize it so that we customize it towards our customer. And then all of a sudden at the last minute, if Tom can't make it, and maybe Megan has to be in the meeting, I can just switch out Tom and put in Megan. So you can store items on the pallet and the audience doesn't see them, you know, because you'll be in slideshow mode when the audience gets there. So I use it for all sorts of things. I use it for pre presentations. I use it for designing because I might be saying, you know what, I wonder if this text box should go over here and put that one over there. You know, so I use it for designing. And also, sometimes I have a slightly different meeting, or excuse me, a slightly different message for the morning group as opposed to the afternoon group. So again, I like to ask you to focus in for a second. And you might want to take notes, just kind of write some of these things down because I'm going to give you a keystroke. I want to copy that text box. And I know from example, I know I've been in this game for a long time, that most people are going to go copy and paste. But why not just duplicate it? Duplicate it. It's 50% faster. So if you're on any object, you just go control D, control D for duplicate. And then I can say, okay, I'm having a meeting with General Mills in the morning and maybe Medtronic in the afternoon. So instead of redoing my whole deck, then I just say, okay, we're ready for Medtronic now. And then you just swap. Okay. And of course, get rid of the logo, get the right logo in there. But control D, you can duplicate anything as much as you want. All right, so that's the palette. Let me go ahead and get to another slide. Let's continue on. Right below the slide is a place for your notes. So when you click on it, See, you can add my notes in here. All right, I'll just throw a couple words in there. Now, one thing about notes, you can go ahead and add all the notes you want. And I'm always a big proponent when I'm training, I should be well versed in the subject matter or when I'm presenting, like right now I'm presenting. So I have to be well-versed in my subject matter. Sometimes you are presenting on something really, really technical. So you need notes. So you type your notes in after each slide. You can rehearse, you can print your notes out. And in my opinion, and this is just me, but I always have my notes. I've taught this course throughout my career more than a thousand times, easily. And guess what? So I still have my notes right next to me. I wiggled my paper so you could hear. Them. I have my notes right next to me because you never know if you get thrown off your game. Something could happen. I need to refocus. I have my notes to help me through it. Okay? So, Another curious thing about notes. Now, if everybody watches what I do, I'm going to select that word PowerPoint. Hey, just so you know, double click a word, that's how you select a word. Triple click a word, that's how you select a paragraph. But if I select PowerPoint and now watch me, I'm going to bold it. I'm going to italicize it. I'm going to change the font type, font size to 36, and I'm going to turn it red. 
okay, now I changed the font size to 36 and I turned it red, but I don't see any changes here. But not to worry, when you do format and you go to print out your notes, so I don't want to print out my slides, I want to print out my notes, the formatting does take place. That's how it's always been in PowerPoint. When you format your notes, they don't take all the attributes. But when you do print your notes, and you print your notes by going to File, Print. Print what? Print your slide, print notes, print uh, outline. Outline is perfect. Hey, where are you going to go over today? I'll send you my outline. And then handouts. And handouts, you can have one slide per page or nine. So you've got a huge PowerPoint. You can break it down to nine per, per page. I personally have never used anything but three. Because three is the only one that gives you the little lines so your audience can take notes. Hey, speaking of audience, remember we're going to tailor our PowerPoint to our audience. Handouts. You only hand them out at the beginning or at the end. Never during. So at the beginning, if it's technical presentation and you're like, hey, follow along, I'm on slide seven. We're at the end for a reference but never stop your presentation and go, okay, I'm gonna hand out handouts now. So try to do it at the beginning or at the end. So that's your notes area. And then the last part I'm gonna go over in the environment is the status bar. And in all my programs, I watch the status bar. So it's a little gray bar at the bottom of every window, every application window, way on the left, of my status bar, it's saying, Mike, you're on slide two of 11. You got your dictionary on. And then when I go over, it has a little icon for notes. So I can turn my notes on and off. And then I've got different views, normal, slide sorter. So you sort your slides, a really nice reading view that will change the fonts and the color and everything slightly so that it's easier on your eyes so you can proof it. And then slide show view that shows the slide you're on so that you can see what it will look like when you're presenting. And then your zoom. And then the last little icon I'm going to point out is fit slide to current window. So you regroup. But one of the views I want to concentrate on and show you a little trick here is the normal view. So that's where we normally work, right? But you click it again and it brings up the notes. And you click it again and now you go to the outline view. So the normal view, you click on it three times. So you toggle between your normal, your notes, and your outline. Now, when you're presenting and when you're making a PowerPoint, the message is what's really important. That's why we use PowerPoint. We are the presenter, the PowerPoint is our aid. The minute PowerPoint starts taking over, you're in trouble. Because I've been in presentations before I was a trainer, I sold drugs. <laughs> Pharmaceuticals, legal ones, I worked for Novartis, okay? Novartis Pharmaceuticals. I uh, worked with cardiologists. And I was in PowerPoint meetings where I was so amazed at the demonstration on PowerPoint and the transitions and the stars flying in and out and an origami just flew away. And then on break, nobody knew what the person was actually talking about because we were so engulfed on all the bells and whistles of PowerPoint. Whereas we have to concentrate on the message. 
So now I resize my pane and look at, now I can concentrate on the message. And anything you do in the outline view ends up on your slide. Because this is highlight for 2020. Uh, we're gonna actually have three people, Sammy, Megan, and Tom. So I better change my slide later. But anything I type in here goes on the appropriate slide, right? So I'm really focused on the message and not focused on the graphics or the pictures. And if you need a new bullet point, you just hit enter and then you got a new bullet point. And if you need a new slide, well, it's an outline. So I can use my a paragraph tool to decrease my outline. And now I have a new slide. So I use this to really focus on my message, build my message. And between you and I, I actually use a word processor to build my outline. You know, Microsoft Word, you can make outlines in Word, focus on your message, and in PowerPoint, at any time I can go new slide. And way down on the bottom, you can import slides from an outline in Word. And what it does, finds the outline, major points, a new slide, some sub points are bullet points. So focus on the message, then the design. Because I want to tailor this PowerPoint to my audience. So I'm going to go to my slide sorter view. And this is presentation 101. This message I'm going to give you right now. You always tell the audience what you're going to tell them. You tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. Okay? So tell the audience what you're going to tell them tell them and then tell them what you told them and a lot of people skip that last part and i've even seen presenters get to the very last slide and go oh oh i guess we're done and they actually say that it's like you guess you're done <laughs> you should know you're done right and you should also wrap up so i always have a nice slide that i call a book in so I have the same slide at the beginning and at the end, because a lot of you were early today, and I thank you for that. You're in, check, checking out your technology, you're in early, and you saw I had a nice slide saying um, the name of the class, my name, and rotated through the agenda. But all I gotta do is take that agenda, duplicate it, control D, put it at the very end, and change the word to conclusion, wrap up, wrap up, whatever you want to name it. And now you tell the audience what you're going to tell them. You tell them, you tell them what you told them. And then don't end up your PowerPoint on that black screen of death. End it up on a really nice slide. I always have my contact information in there, Mike Martin. And new horizons and then that's how you leave a presentation you don't leave it the black screen of death okay now you got control d here's a couple other keystrokes you might want to write down whenever you start a presentation i'm in front of the room of people right i'm a little nervous I've been doing this for 20 years. I still get a little nervous. And they say, Mike, you're on. I always said function five. Hello, everybody. So function five is how you start a presentation. Escape is how you get out of it. Now, the reason why I use function five is because if you use that tool down on your status bar, that's a slideshow. That always starts the slideshow on a slide you have selected. And again, maybe you're nervous. 
and you're on the wrong slide and they're like, hey, Amy, you're up. Hi. And if you use that, oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong slide. You know, and you don't want to start off on the wrong slide. I asked you to write down function five, but you know what? Here's how you learn most keystrokes. If you go to slideshow and go over to the left and say started from the beginning, for 25 years, and I'm not kidding, for 25 years, Microsoft has been telling us to use F5. You see, it says right there, use F5. If I spell check my PowerPoint deck, which I hope you do, I use F7. Because way long time ago, I noticed that F7. And I've been using F7 ever since. So that's how you learn most keystrokes. And this one is the best. Well, undo is the best, but this one is the third best. Let me make sure I'm on the right screen. Boom. Window X. So if you're using Windows 10, you know, the operating system Windows 10, it brings up a little side menu when you go Window X. If you're not seeing it, uh, search for what's called Mobility Center. So when you click on Mobility Center, right before I present, I hit Window X. And look at, I've got a one-stop shop to make sure everything is correct. My volume right. Am I fully charged? Doesn't matter. Big tip. Always bring your AC cord. Always bring your AC cord. And then hang, hang on to your seats for this next one. Not presenting. See that? The last one. It's like, yes, I am presenting. So I click on turn on because I'm presenting and now that will block all pop-ups. Okay, all pop-ups. New software installations, emails, messages from teams. So that will block all pop-ups now. All right, building better slides. When I build a slide, I try to do this guideline. Now it's a guideline, it's not a rule. I always try very hard to stick to my guideline called two by two. Two by two, in your entire presentation, try to use only two font types and two font colors. Okay, so two font types and two font colors. So one font type for your heading and one color, another font type for your body and a different color. Obviously, obviously you want to use fonts that audience can read well. The heading should always be a sans serif font. Sans means without, serif means tails. So without tails, no wiggly lines. And your body should be serif fonts. Now that is a guideline. Try very hard to use the two by two. But of course, if you're introducing a new product or it's Sarah's birthday, go wild on that slide, okay? But on the majority, two by two. Two colors, two font types. Another thing I work really hard at is remember this is not Word, it's PowerPoint. And I do not read the message to my audience. I convey the message, I use this as a tool. So the next guideline is seven by seven by seven. And what that means, is try really hard to have no more than seven bullet points per slide. This one has eight, but remember I put in that new bullet point as an example. So try really hard not to have more than seven bullet points per slide. 
seven words per bullet point and make sure the person in the seventh row and beyond can see. Because I've been in rooms where the marketing manager will say, as you can clearly see, and they have so much on that slide, nobody in the room can see. So seven bullet points per slide, seven words per bullet point, and make sure the person in the seventh row and beyond can see. All right, so I'm kind of throwing some tips and tricks at you and some guidelines for training and presenting and whatever you use PowerPoint for, mostly for presenting. But here's a great tool, in my opinion. So you're going to present a presentation. You worked really hard getting your presentation going. You designed it, you put the proper colors in, you got all the text in. Now you want to practice, right? Because practice makes perfect. So I start up in my first slide, I kind of get everything going. I relax, I go to my slideshow tab, and my slideshow ribbon, look at here. There's a command that's called rehearse timings. And it tells us that practice makes perfect. So you click on it, the slideshow starts, and then there's a little timer, and you can advance the slide with the timer and advance the transitions and the slides and see it's tracking. And you can advance your slides with a mouse click or with your arrow keys. So you got arrow keys on any PC keyboard. Left goes to the previous. Right arrow key goes to the next. The word previous starts with P, so that's how you go to previous. And the word next starts with the N as in Nancy. So that's how you go next. But see, when you get completely done, the timer is going to tell us exactly how long I took. So it could say it took you 15 minutes. And then you got to add time for you know people coming in a little late, wrap it up a little early, handouts or whatever. So at least you know how long this is going to take. So that's rehearsed timings, and I canceled. It had a question, do you want to keep the timings or not? I canceled it because I just wanted it as an FYI. Speaking of FYIs, you can also add animation to your text. So there is a tab called animation, and that makes your text come alive. And see, I just clicked on fly in. There's a little down arrow, and you can have them spin in. So I know that's cool. You can have text spin in, or you can do the bold flashes. But again, I'm not trying to impress my audience, I'm trying to convey a message. So I do use fly in because it's nice and neat. But nobody that I know of, when they read a book, reads bottom up. When you have a transition, or excuse me, an animation, an animation, to the right is animation effects. I can say, come in from the left, because that's how we read on the Western side of the world, from left to right. And they came in kind of quick, so you can even move over a little further on your animations tab. It increased the duration. It doesn't seem like you're coming in full of caffeine. So now it comes in nice and slow. Or comfortable, I should say. Now, this next feature. So I got some animation. Oh, wait a minute. 
I almost forgot one thing. Animation. Look at this in the advanced animation group. It's right to the right of your animation. I picked a pretty darn good animation. And now I only have 13 other slides to add the animation to. But there's an animation painter. So I can paint the animation to all the other slides. And that's going to save me so much time. Click it once, you can only use it once. But I got 13 slides to go with. So I double click it. And now I click on any slide I want and see it adds that animation. How easy is that? And not easy, well, it is, but consistent, quick, efficient. I can do it on graphics, text, whatever I want. And when I'm done, I just have to go back up to and turn it off. Whoa, the animation painter. So you set up animation on one slide. Remember, the goal is to keep everything consistent and just use the animation painter. And if you're like, after this class, if you're like, how did Mike do that? Hover over the animation painter, read the three little paragraphs. You'll know exactly how to do it. All right. Or after the webinar, I should say. Now, oh, 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 this next thing. I'm going to rehearse my slideshow again. I won't spend a lot of time at it, but I'm going to go to my slideshow. But this time, I'm going to rehearse it to pretend like I can comfortably read it. So I might let this slide go about eight seconds. There it is. Now I comfortably read my agenda. And then you continue on. Now I have a handheld clicker, right? But I told you the keystrokes on your keyboard to go through it. And I'm going to go really quick. So we get the point. So then what I can do is at the very end, when I end the slideshow, see, it tells me exactly the total time. And this time I want to keep it. So now I kept it. All right. Look what else you can do. Way over on the left, you can create a custom slideshow. Now I already have one made, but what is a custom slideshow? A custom slideshow is a show within a show. So you might have a deck that has 50 slides in it, and you know, because you rehearsed it, it takes you 30 minutes. But then your boss says, hey, some people from France are coming in. You have to give the same presentation, but you only have 15 minutes. So it's like, what? This presentation takes me 30, and now I got to do it in 15? Yeah. Okay. I have some options. One is I can talk fast. I do not suggest that. When you talk really fast, people who have a hard time understanding, they tune out and it's a sign you're nervous. So watch the speed of your voice. Two, I could delete slides or hide slides and then go file save as and make it my 15 minute presentation. But in that case, I'm managing two PowerPoints, right? Two different files, 30 minute, 15 minute. Or do this, create a custom slideshow. You click on it, 
I'm going to say new. And now I know my slides because I've been practicing. So I got to have an intro slide. I'm going to go right to the sales process. Nope, I better have an agenda to tell them what I'm going to tell them. Then go to the sales process. And then they just want to know the financial stuff. You know, those leadership. And then have my conclusion and my book bookend. So see, now I'm cutting my slides from 13 to seven. And I say, okay. But now I have a little box here. And I can say, hey, when the people from France come in, I just click on it, go to my custom slideshow. And here's the people, or here's the slides for France. Another thing I, we can do, and the people that were early saw this. I also make a custom slideshow called Intro. And you can edit your custom slideshow. Because like this one, it says custom slideshow one. It's like, what does that mean? So you edit it and you name it France. So I got two. And the first one is intro. So I'm going to edit that. And all I have in my intro is my bookend and the agenda. So I better edit this. So I'll remove that and add the agenda. Say okay. Now remember I have timings on them. I timed it. So now you can go ahead and in your setup, there's an option to use the timings. So if you time it, you can have your PowerPoint run automatically on your timings for a kiosk or for a really nice intro slide when people are coming into the room for your presentation. So I say use timings, use my intro show, and now this is gonna run automatically. Now this first slide was timed See how everything's coming in? I'm not touching anything now. And it will keep going until you stop it. And that's how you can A, create a custom slideshow, which is unbelievable, because you're gonna save so much time managing decks, and then you can also time it and have it run automatically. All right. I'm watching the time. I want to go through one more thing. And then we will uh, wrap it up. Okay, so one more thing. Smart art. Art. That is smart. So pictures tell a thousand words, right? So I want to use pictures. Not, not a ton of them, but I do like pictures. And graphs, graphics are even better. So I want to describe a sales process. And if I just typed out four or five or three or four bullet points, that might not catch the salespeople's interest. So instead, I'm going to go to insert. And in your illustrations group, smart art. And there are so many graphics that you can make really easily. So look at the categories over on the left. The first one is all, which is just simply overwhelming. So break it down into lists of information, processes. I'm not gonna read them all to you, but hierarchies, really good organizational charts. You can make an organizational chart in PowerPoint, copy it, paste it in Word or an Outlook. Make periods, pyramids, I mean, and then graphics that have pictures in them. So it is a sales process. So I'm gonna pick one and I don't pick them randomly. I kind of read about it. It's amazing what happens when you read these, but I think this one will be good. And look at this 
text, I mean, this uh, graphic that comes in, and it tells me pretty clearly where the text goes. But upon further investigation, I find out that there's a little, little carrot here, and now you build your outline. So you put your text in there. So a sales process is you always tell them about the features of the product. And now I'm gonna build my outline features. Then you tell them about the benefits. Because features tell, benefits sell. And then you always tell the ROI. And then if you want another shape, you just hit enter and DYA. So now I can tell them about the features, the benefits, the ROI, which means return on investment and the DIA. And then when I close this out, there's my graphic. And in my smart art tools, I can change the colors. I can change the model, like a 3D model. Maybe make it a little bit more colorful. You just hover over, you find the right one. And look at how easily and quickly I made this. And I still have it on timings. So <laughs> there's an example of how timings actually work. So let's turn timings off. There we go. And now there's my sales process. And if that doesn't increase sales, I don't know what will. But before I go, when you are a presenter, always, always, always define your acronym. As I said, ROI was return on investment. I said it twice. Always define your acronyms because yeah, return on investment, but if I work for a county, it's a uh, request of information. If I worked in healthcare, region of interest. And if you come from where my family comes from, it means Republic of Ireland, all right? So this last one I never said anything about, and people in the room might be going, what does DYA mean? And all that means is define your acronym. Always define your acronym. I have to say one more thing. I cannot leave without this, and then I promise I'll wrap up. But see this key focus area? I got three bullet points. Last time I gave this presentation, I saw people looking at their smartphones. I'm like, I'm losing their interest. I mean, I didn't think this slide was that boring, right? Here's our key focus areas. So what you can do, and you've been able to do this for a long time, just nobody ever pointed this out to you. Click on the text. Under your home tab, there's a paragraph group, you know, where you put bullets and all that stuff and align your text. Well, look what's been sitting here for a long, long time. Convert to SmartArt. It analyzes the amount of text you have. It narrows down the choices. You hover over. You make it 3D, at least I do. I think that's kind of fun. Matter of seconds, I changed text to a piece of smart art. So we went through a lot of stuff. I know it's a power hour, so I tried to go through quickly and get you as much information as I could. But there are some brand new things in that environment. I know people in the room learned that, hey, I didn't know you could use a palette as a storage place. I didn't realize the status bar had the normal view with three different views to focus on the outline. I tried to say, hey, let's tailor our presentation to the audience. Tell them what you're gonna tell them. Tell them, tell them what you told them. Two by two, seven by seven by seven. Building better slides will help you with those guidelines. And then I gave you delivery tips with keystrokes, remember Windows X, and I truly, truly, truly hope 
that this was beneficial for you. And now I'd like to hand it back to our great MC and we'll open up for Q&A. So Mayan. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, please uh, enter any questions you may have for Mike um, right now at this time. Just a quick reminder, um, if you're interested in uh, the material that's presented in this webinar today, or if you have any questions regarding what's available um, in terms of PowerPoint training, please contact your local center for more information. You can log on to newhorizons.com and do a quick uh, code search to find the centers that's nearest to you. Um, also, the webinar schedule is up to date on our website. If you just click on the webinars link on newhorizons.com, you can see what's available and register for any upcoming classes. I know, Mike, you have um, at least, uh, one more webinar um, at least coming up in the next couple months here. Um, also, friendly reminder, I'll be sending out this archive recording link later today so you can view uh, the session and also pass on to any colleagues that may have missed the session at all. So. Um, Couple questions, a lot of good questions that did come in here for you, Mike. Um, one is uh, the person is talking about hardware graphics acceleration and the slides show hardware graphics um, that's needed to play embedded videos in slideshow mode. Um, they say it plays in a preview, preview, but not in slideshow unless that's disabled. Is that, uh, is that something that we need to take into considera consideration? when we're trying to play videos during our presentation? Well, uh, it's getting a, a little bit more into the hardware question as opposed to, you know, I'm doing software training. Doctor. So yes, you, you do need powerful graphic cards in your computer, you know, so I'm not sure what graphic card you're actually gotcha. using. But uh, the uh, insert video, so that's under insert the video. Now you can insert online videos where you store them in uh, stream or YouTube and that's gonna work perfect. So that's probably the best thing to do. But if you do embed, embed a video from your computer, your computer should have enough power, enough strong video card to run them. I've never owned a computer that hasn't ran a uh, embedded, video but i'm not real versed on graphic cards and hardware i'm kind of more on the software side of things totally understandable um but very good answer <laughs> uh the next question was um in terms of uh seven by seven by seven something you had mentioned i believe um they the person's just asking uh to go over that again what was the last of the seven by seven by seven you had talked about Oh, perfect. Yeah, now that was a guideline and I try really, really hard to hold to it. And what that means is no more than seven bullet points per slide. Because we don't want to turn this into a Word document where we're just reading it to the audience, right? So you try hard, no more than seven bullet points per slide, no more than seven words, or yeah, seven words per bullet point. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So no more than seven words per bullet point. And then the last one is make sure that the person in the seventh row and beyond can see. And what I mean by that is just make sure that when you're presenting, everybody in the room can see. Because sometimes there's so much on the slide, so much information that people can't see it. So that's the last seven. Great. Um, another question that came in is um, about presentations. Uh, it's twofold. One is similar to what you're doing now. When you are um, presenting on, say, GoToWebinar, Zoom, um, Skype, whatever platform you have, is it necessary to have a uh, dual monitors or multiple monitors? And the second half of that is um, if you are only using one screen, how are you still able to see your notes while you're presenting? Oh, I love that question. I love it because here's the answer. If at all possible, use two monitors. Now your laptop is one, right? And I got a second one connected. 
So I try really, really hard to use two monitors on all the platforms like WebEx and uh, Adobe Connect and all of them, right, Zoom. So I use two monitors at all times. And then what happens is when I go F5 to start the slideshow, hello, everybody. Here's what I see. That This is what I see. And I can see the time I'm spinning on the slide. I can see the time. Because like I want to wrap up by a certain time, so I'm watching the time. I have my laser pointer right there. Hey, everybody. Here's my laser pointer. Uh, if I'm running out of time, I can jump to another slide. Also, if people doesn't know what that cup of coffee is, you know, it's like, what is that? You can zoom in on it. So there's all sorts of tools here, including your notes. So if you have notes, here, let me get out of the zoom. I don't have notes in this because it was just kind of an intro, but if I had my notes, they'd all be right there. So as the presenter, you got everything that you need, but you got to have two monitors. And you also have to go to slideshow on your ribbon and in the monitors group, make sure you turn on presenter view. And then you got it. Great question. I know we're heading to the top of the hour, so I have a couple more I'll ask here. A lot of questions came in for the mobility center. Um, could you, uh, a lot of it was just, can you just show us how to get back to the mobility center? Or how do you get to the mobility center? Yes, I'm running Windows 10. So it's a feature in Windows 10. If you have a different Windows operating system, you may have to just do a search for your mobility mobility center but i use the window key and x so window x now it's up a little menu and then there's your mobility center and this is the one-stop shop to check everything before you're presenting great and just to kind of piggyback off that now um we also did receive quite a few questions we have um quite a few mac users on um, the webinar today, just you know, learning to get more tips and tricks. Now, do you have any shortcut uh, cheat sheets or any um, details on how to find some of these functions using a Mac? I know we were saying F5, which I know is P more PC based, which uh, a Mac would not have. Um, I know that instead of Control and Alt, there's the Command and Option buttons on a, a Mac keyboard. Do you have any suggestions or any tips on uh, have ha having a cheat sheet for a Mac user to uh, follow along with your uh, presentation here? Yeah. Um, a disclaimer: I only know PCs. I've been working with PCs my whole life. I'm married and all my children use Macs and my wife's a teacher and she uses a Mac. And I don't know much about Macs at all. I'm a PC guy. But through the years, through the years, the two have been really coming closer and closer together as far as applications. And that keystroke F5 does work in Macs. And I, I know you can just do a very quick, um, Search, I just search for uh, PowerPoint, Mac, keystrokes, and there they are right there. Keyboard shortcuts for PowerPoint in a Mac. So for your presenting, and there you go. So I just went ahead and as the question was being read, I did a super quick search and I got it right off the bat. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. I know we're at the top of the hour. As Mike said, it's a power hour, so there's a lot of jam-packed information in here. Um, uh, just a quick note, don't forget the recording will be sent out later today, so you'll have it to review everything um, as you uh, go through uh, any presentations that you put together. Thank you again, as always, Mike, for presenting on behalf of New Horizons. We look forward to your um, upcoming session as well. Um, please, everyone, if you haven't already, register for that webinar um, that's coming up. 
Um, with that said, thank you again for joining us. Uh, stay safe, and you may now log off from the webinar. Thank you. All right, thank you.